Hello guys, welcome back, it's Easy Electronics channel with a brand new video and today I have something special for you once again and I am announcing a new power supply video build thing which will be really really cool and uh, I can't wait to show you the final product, it's absolutely amazing. But for now, today I have this video for you where I just talking about some of the things I am planning to do before I start building the power supply. So without further talking, let's get right into the video and you'll see what I have planned for this next power supply. <laughs> So, as you all know, I had released a couple of videos uh, here and there, and uh, we had this AC power supply right here, and we had a rectifier uh, here uh, that is uh, rectifying the AC coming from this power supply and giving you uh, about 70 or so volts, 71 open circuit uh, DC, uh, quite powerful. Uh, really useful for you know all kinds of high uh, power projects that uh, I am planning to build so this will be used for currently in plans for an induction heater and a Tesla coil and you know obviously like ZVS drivers and stuff so uh, absolutely brilliant if you are into a high power uh, stuff so the reason for it is I pretty much have all I need for my power supplies in the lab and I should not need any more in pretty much next year or so. So essentially I have a uh, 14 volt a 55 amp uh, charger that I have encased in a um, computer case uh, which is a charger and it's it's a power supply at the same time so I am charging batteries with it and uh, all of that so essentially I use uh, that to charge my humongous batteries I have shown in a couple of videos uh, and uh, that's about it I'm charging my car battery with it sometimes uh, it's a really powerful charger and uh, I, it's like a power supply then I have uh, you know obviously I have my a variable ATX uh, power supply it's not in focus but that's all right so doesn't really matter I have that power supply and uh, I have this little guy right here which I have built so that's also pretty cool Re really useful thing I thought I'm not going to use it but to be honest take an any ATX power supply stick it in there and you have all that voltage you have all of that outputs I mean it's just brilliant and uh, yeah so we have that and uh, what's next you ask well as you see I'm missing something on my desk and that is my bench power supply so reality is it the case for it had been sitting outside under rain for a couple of days and there's nothing inside anymore it's empty it's completely disassembled and uh, the reason for it is really simple we are building a new one yes we're building a new one and uh, I have received some really cool parts in the mailbag some time ago so uh, I'm really looking into building another one now the reason why it's not built yet is because a I'm working and B there's stuff to do at home so I am planning to build one uh, the dilemma at the moment is how to make it really really small and I'm talking no bigger than this box uh, because it has to encase two ATX power supplies two boost converters 
two digital uh, meters like uh, this. It's just a screen from it, but you got the idea. Digital meters that will be measuring your voltage, current, resistance, power, amp hours, and watt hours. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have to put all of that in a really small package, and I am even planning to add another voltmeter in there. Now, whether or not that will work, I have no idea. So, it's kind of staying in the box, and if I tilt this, you'll see that I have two ATX power supplies in there. Exactly the same, um, almost brand new. And uh, I also have a lot of coolers in there, and this is the module I was talking about. Uh, as you can see, it has a board on the back, you can take it off. And uh, it has a Arduino type of microcontroller, uh, can, uh, controller. and it's already programmed. All you do is you plug it in, select the mode, and Bob's your anti. So it does everything you want, and uh, essentially. I want to build one now as I said the case is uh, a little bit tricky because I really want to make this small to fit on the desk I don't want it to be bigger than uh, my AC power supply and whether or not that will work that is a big big question but uh, I am looking forward into that now the reality is uh, one power supply is only 360 watts. Then the second one is as well 360 watts. So by looking at the specs, you can see you can only pull 16 amps from the 12 volt rail. So you know 16 amps times by 12 volt rail, uh, let's say. It's mm -mm, 100, let's say one, yeah, it's like one eight, 180 watts pretty much. And uh, what are you going to do with that? So, 180 watts of uh, power that we can supply to the boost converter, and uh, I don't know. It's only 180 watts. Now, is it going to be enough? That is the question. Uh, but the reality is 180 watts at 12 volts. That's like 16 amps. That's a lot of power. Lots of power. And uh, that goes through the boost converter. Let's say we output... Uh, 48 volts while well, all of a sudden those 16 amps uh, got cut in four so we only have four amps 48 volts which is still a decent amount of power per channel uh, so we're not losing power uh, when we transmit it from one voltage to a higher voltage but uh, we are uh, losing amperage because of the boost circuitry and uh, that is okay that is totally okay the efficiency is just great uh, in this thing so I got no worries whatsoever but um, I mean let's say I want 60 volts well now all of a sudden I can only output 3 amps okay I can only output 3 amps now uh, you know, the real question is, do I need anything more? Because I don't. The uh, reality is, this meter can only measure up to 10 amps anyway. So, why even bother? Um, so, that should be plenty enough of power for a power supply of this size. Now, obviously, uh, my plan is to have like outputs like these obviously they are given to you um, 12 volt 5 volt 3.3 volt and ground they are just given to you I'll show it on this one 
12 volt, 5 volt, 3.3 volt and ground, it's given to use it. Uh, you know, if you're not planning to have a high current on them, put a fuse on each one or just use uh, a single wire to emit the current, uh, something like that. And uh, that should be it. But for our 12 volt rail, which will go into the boost converter, we're gonna use almost all of the wires so we don't have any voltage drop. And uh, when that is happening, we can have maximum power delivery uh, to the circuitry and have maximum power output uh, from the circuitry. Uh, some of the things that I will be changing is these capacitors. I don't know how are they performing. Um, I did not witness any uh, kind of heating problem or things like that. But I need, uh, what I really need to do is take a look at the ripple noise on the output because that might be a problem if we are going to power something sensitive. Uh, but apart from that, I don't really see a problem using this on microcontrollers and stuff because A, you're gonna be using a ATX 3.3 volt rail for a microcontroller or, or a five volt rail anyway. So this doesn't even consider you. But if you are looking forward into using a higher voltage for something sensitive, let's say uh, like a circuitry or whatever, if it's taking that voltage and uh, you, you know it has a microcontroller, so it will be using either 3.3 volt or 5 volt, it needs to have some sort of step down uh, circuitry, either a linear regulator or a uh, switch mode regulator in whichever case it uses it, it will have a smoothing capacitors already to compensate for the noise that is on the output of a buck converter or a linear re regulator. So that should be no problem. Uh, the noise doesn't really matter, but um, essentially uh, we will have an ability to uh, use uh, even higher amounts of power uh, because these power supplies will be isolated from each other and uh, we will be able to combine two channels and have positive and negative uh, channels combined as I said and uh, let's say you want uh, 24 volts, uh, you know, so you take your 12 volt rail, combine it, and you end up with 24 volts, something like you know, 16 amps. So you have doubled your power output right there. Second thing is you can do the same thing with the boost converter. If you're outputting 60 volts DC at uh, 3 amps, let's say, uh, that's 180 watts. Uh, you can combine 60 and 60, get 120 volts, and uh, you know, you'll have your 360 watts now. So that is something you can obviously use, but if you're gonna be using 120 volts, you gotta, you gotta rectify it for it. So stick your mains wire in here, and uh, you have your 160 or whatever volts on here. So that should be plenty enough for our um, purposes. But yeah, that is something to look for in the next couple of videos. I am going to build a enclosure for this in a couple of days and uh, that will be coming out soon. So yeah, let me know down below what do you think about this build and what should I add to this and uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching and as always, like, comment and obviously subscribe keeps my channel going. So that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.
and while you're still watching there will be popping videos somewhere on the screen for you to click on so again check out my channel and you'll see some of the newer videos I have released not long ago so you can obviously click on them and check it out I would really appreciate it and yeah thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video